Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about putting up electrical boxes. Specifically, uh, at least the term I heard is called low boxing, where this seems to be every electrical box that doesn't require a ladder. So uh, I want to kind of show you what I did. If uh, you recall in previous videos, we talked about how to lay everything out, right? And how to mark everything so that when you get to this phase, you can just walk around and nail up exactly what you need. Um, I'm in the garage, so I figured I'd start and show you kind of what the low boxing of my house is gonna look like. I'll start with the specialty stuff. Um, right there in the garage, you see those metal boxes to there and the kind of each side of the bay doors. Hard to see with the lighting, but there's one for each bay door. Those are gonna be future uh, electric vehicle chargers so that I can um, potentially charge three electric vehicles in here and have the space and everything to where I could do a nice 240 volt fast charger. So uh, one thing about these that I didn't realize until I put the original boxes up is, see like this, this box here, right? I was originally gonna have all the wires nice and hidden, but I cannot drill through that uh, garage uh, header there. So these boxes, are actually gonna have an extender ring to kick them out to be sit proud of the wall. And then I am gonna use a EMT conduit to actually feed them. And this will all happen later. I don't have an electric vehicle now, but I suspect I'll have one in the next you know decade or two. So might as well pre-wire the thing, or at least pre-allocate, not pre-wire, wire is expensive, but at least have spots and conduits to where I can fish wire very easily when the time comes. So uh, those two bays down there will have uh, EMT conduit connecting to them. And that conduit will connect to this junction box here. And then I'll have three quarter PVC inside the wall to actually connect to the panel. And then likewise here um, for this bay, this will just be three quarter PVC connected to the panel. Um, and this, so three outlets, one junction box, and then the panel is just right over here um, where that's gonna go. And we should be good. So moving along the garage, um, I set my outlets at 48 inches just because you want them higher in the garage to clear any cabinets or anything like that. Um, code for garages is one outlet per garage bay. So three car garage, three outlets, which is most homes I think built in America because they're generally built on the cheap. Uh, and that just sucks. So I put in a lot of outlets all along that wall and then all along this back wall and then here on this back wall i've got outlets you can't see them because our doors are in the way but that is going to be a dedicated circuit for fridges and freezers and um, so i could run multiple freezers and a garage fridge and um, not overload anything and make sure i have plenty of power um, going to the mechanical room switch outlets i chose to do the outlets down low um, just because a lot of the piping and everything will be more high and eye level. So, uh, power cords can kind of go down low and be tight out of the way. I figured that'd be a good, uh, balance. Um, here we've got a dedicated circuit for the network rack. That's going to go right here, dedicated 20 amp circuit. Uh, the mechanical room stuff and the garage are all in one circuit. Um, the mechanical room, things that will need power are not going to be very much, you know, starter for the for the tankless water heater water filtration stuff maybe later so uh moving on laundry room just general purpose outlets switch up high you've got a outlet for the washing machine right you want that up high and uh over here we've got a outlet for the dryer a two gang outlet decade circuit for the dryer dryer's 30 amp and um, the laundry room, all the receptacles in the laundry room must be their own on their own circuit per code. Uh, why, I don't know. But if it's any general receptacle in the laundry room has to be on its own uh, circuit. Uh, moving into the bathroom, right? Countertop height, receptacle, switches. You can see our notation that we talked about from the last video. Um, moving into my son's bedroom. See, way more outlets than we need per code, purposefully, right? Just because it's, why not? They're cheap. And then, you know, moving into, a, again, a bathroom. We've got switches. 
We've got a counter height receptacle for, uh, for the vanity. And uh, moving on into the living area. More counter height receptacles. These are for a pair of computer workstations. So, um, so I raise those to where they'd be above uh, counter height so that when you're sitting at the desk, right, the computer's on the desk and you can just plug it right in. Be nice and easy. Uh, kitchen, same kind of way. All the kitchen receptacles that you kind of saw in the previous video from the layout at counter height. Uh, back there into the, on the other side of that wall is the pantry. Same reason, counter height. Um, so here is kind of the completion of the, of the in-slab wiring. So if you recall, we have this pipe going to the kitchen island there, PVC pipe that we put in the slab to feed the outlets and the dishwasher and the, the uh, disposal for the kitchen. And so that pipe terminates right there. And this is how I chose to do it. Uh, I'd love for the electricians watching to tell me, is there a better way than what I did? Because I really fabric cobbled this together to make this work. And it seems to work fine. Uh, but got three quarter inch PVC, a coupler, uh, three quarter to half inch reducer bushing PVC, half inch PVC, half inch PVC to female thread, transition to the flex ENT Smurf tube, uh, half inch male thread, and then the tube, and then teardrop it through the stud, and then into this junction box here where we connect, um, and this will, and we'll have other, um, you know, wires coming in here to uh, to actually connect uh, to the circuits, right? Because I'm going to have uh, two circuits going through here. I'm going to have a um, one of the kitchen receptacle circuits, right? Those dedicated 20 amp circuits. One of those is going to tap off of here to feed the receptacles in the island. And the other circuit is a single 20 amp to do dishwasher disposal. You can run those on separate independent circuits or you can combine them together. I chose to combine them together just because it, it's going to be fine. Um, Got my pull string in here, ready to pull the wire. Uh, I had to extend it whenever I, you know, glued all this up, but no big deal. So that is all ready to go. Uh, moving right along, again, just more outlets here. This wall, um, I haven't actually measured yet to see if I'm technically within code because of all the windows. We talked about having 12 feet outlet to outlet. I don't have an outlet in that corner. I've got one here. And I've got one at the end. I may have to put one over in that corner. Probably a good idea anyway. Uh, I got a suggestion in the comments on one of the other videos to put outlets maybe under the windows. I thought about it. I didn't want to drill out those windows, but they are two by sixes. So I could probably get away with it. So I may do that. Um, if you recall our floor outlet, there it is. It's recessed more than I would have wanted, but we can make do with that. We can fix it up. Um, that is leading over to this pipe, as you recall, and the same kind of scenario as before, right? Transitioning to a ENT, flexible, non-metallic uh, conduit, and into this just general receptacle box, and I'll have, you know, uh, more power coming in here to tap off, and this will just be a receptacle. Um, moving into the master area, kind of just more of the same. Switches, nothing fancy receptacles along the wall. I chose to put those under the windows. Those are going to be really fun to try to drill and get through uh, with all those studs. I might, maybe I give up on that. Maybe I don't. We'll see. Uh, electricians, uh, again, if you're watching and in the comments, you see what I'm trying to do. Tell me a better way to do it than to gang drill all those studs. I prefer not, but yeah, we shall see. Uh, ah, a missing box there that I need to put in. There was framing bracing in the way. So I gotta redo that because there should be uh, a box on the other side, right? Matching. Uh, in the bathroom, the same way, right? Um, counter height receptacles, right? For the for the vanities. You know, same over here. So uh, kind of into the master closet. I actually decided to put outlets in the master closet. Uh, do you need outlets in your closet? I don't know. I probably don't, but uh, why not? Because they're cheap, and maybe you want outlets in your closet. Uh, it's easy enough to do now. Okay, kind of snaking through. In the office, I put a lot of receptacles in a small space because this is where I'm going to be have my home office for work and for uh, you know fun projects. So I want lots of receptacles, lots of options. 
you know, I'll have two or three computers in here, a 3D printer, etc. So I want to make sure we have lots of options there. Uh, I'm going to go upstairs. Uh, you guys can kind of see the stairs. I'll talk about the framing more in a different video. But going up the stairs. We'll go in the attic storage area over here first. Light switch. And then a receptacle on the back side of here. I'm doing this for two reasons. Uh, one, just to have an outlet up here because you never know. Two, it'll have power into this general area to where if we just had to finish this room out later, um, I don't have to snake a lot of cables. I already have some stuff out here that I can use. And three, um, I want, I'm gonna, I went ahead and bought doorbell wire and I'm gonna run doorbell wire to my front door. I'm, spoiler alert, I'm gonna have a ring camera. And so I don't really need doorbell wire or doorbell transformer, but I'm gonna run the wire anyway. And I'll probably run it to here because this is about the best place where I would mount the transformer if I were gonna need one. So that was the uh, thought process behind that. Moving along, going down the hall. And I'm trying to rush this. I don't want the video to be too long, especially just like look at all the outlets as I pan through the whole house. But again, more outlets in the hallway there, right? Keeping to that code of every 12 feet and then some. So outlet there, moving into kid's bedroom, kind of same, same deal, just outlets everywhere. Again, all of these outlets doing it hammer height. All right, um, and then in the uh, you know the closets, we decided to do a, a switch inside the closet, and all of these closet switches, we're gonna go one of two ways here: either a normal toggle switch, that's a cheap option, or wire it into a kind of a closure switch where the when the closet door comes open, the light goes on, closet door closes, light goes off, and this can just turn into a junction box with a blanking plate, and it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Uh, so we're doing that for all of the uh, the kids' bedroom. Uh, closets. Uh, and go through Jack and Jill bathroom again. Countertop plugs, right? Got counter height switches. Again, three-way switch, right? Per our plans, leave yourself breadcrumbs. Again, this bedroom kind of a mirror image of the other one, right? And uh, snaking back here. Another kid bedroom. And so here's something, here's a detail that uh, after talking to my daughter, we decided to do. I have an outlet way above there, right? Way up high. Why do you need that? Well, she wants cool, funky LED rope lights for her room, you know, in kind of like the crown molding area to kind of have a, a cool ambiance, right? And she just wants to control it with a remote. So all she cared about was a, an outlet, you know, to, to plug them into. Well, let's put one up high and then she can, uh, just plug them up there and kind of maybe tuck it up nice and neat and uh, not have a cord dangling down the wall. Uh, we did the same thing for my other daughter's bedroom uh, up there. So these are things that when you're kind of building custom and doing this, a lot of this yourself, you can do, you know, and it's, it's super cheap to do when you're, when you're in this phase. So why not? Again, uh, more countertop receptacles in a bathroom, right? Um, this, okay, so this is a linen closet. This was a suggestion by my mother, and it's a good idea. Put an outlet in this linen closet. Why, you ask? Well, there's a lot of trend toward uh, battery-powered vacuums, right? Rather than dragging the cord around, you just pull the vacuum off a docking station, go vacuum, and then put it back. So uh, the whole upstairs will be carpeted, and so this seems like a natural fit to put a an outlet there where we could store a vacuum in this linen closet and... Uh, the kids can vacuum their own space. At least that'll be the theory. Uh, going into the game room, right? So we got a four gang switch here because this will control, you know, hallway and lights in the game room and supplemental lights in the game room and the fan in the game room, etc. cetera. So, um, and then just a lot of outlets in the game room, like all along the wall, all along the wall, as you can see. Way, because... Yeah, we will definitely have kind of a home theater set up here, you know, TV, couch, etc. But I would like the side walls to maybe in a pinch, maybe permanently, who knows, be set up to where you can run a couple more TVs and Xboxes because we're kind of a gaming family. So uh, the flexibility will be nice and those will get, you know, network drops and everything. 
One other thing that we decided to do was in this back corner, I'm gonna run a dedicated outlet for a treadmill, a one of those like, you know, those new like TV workout stations like Tonal or whatever that you see, those require a dedicated circuit. So just thinking kind of long-term of, you know, it, it, the garage is right down there. It's not hard to run an extra circuit. And so I'll go ahead and run a dedicated 20 amp to feed whatever we might want in the future. Um, and then likewise, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this on video yet, but this is attic space up here. And this could be a future finish out for something, maybe a home theater, I don't know. But, you know, I'll have access to the back of the wall here to, uh, to tap off any one of these plugs and circuits. And the garage is right below me as well, so that helps um, for any future expansion. So that's really about it for the um, for low boxing. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about specifics, feel free to uh, leave me a comment, and I will uh, I'll definitely answer you. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good one.